So a couple of months ago, I was making quite a big mistake with my training. In fairness, it was quite an easy mistake to make and I shouldn't be too hard on myself, but it was definitely one which was not going to be helpful for long-term consistency and improvement. It took using one of these to help me become more aware of it and quite honestly, I wouldn't have been able to do it without it. Now if you're curious, this is a lactate meter and I'll explain everything as we go along and show you how you can use my mistake to your own advantage, get more out of your training and reduce the risk of illness and injury. And if you're new here then hey, my name's James and I'm a registered sport and exercise nutritionist. I work with amateur and professional endurance athletes to help them train and race better, improve their recovery and do all of this in a healthy fashion. Now I'm willing to bet that many of you are making the same mistake in your training as I was because it's so common and I've seen it in so many athletes that I've worked with over the years. But in my opinion, correcting it is incredibly powerful and I hand on heart believe that it will make you faster and fitter over the long term. Now my main goal with training has changed over the last few years. I used to be focused on performance as my end metric, so faster swimming, cycling and running, and the outcome was more important to me and my training was set up with this as the focus. I had a good balance of easy, extended endurance sessions and shorter, harder sessions, and generally I made good progress and I enjoyed my training, but I definitely had periods where I felt quite beaten up and tired. My approach wasn't necessarily wrong, and in theory I was following good practice for training polarization and balancing my load. The change I've made to my approach to training is that I now focus on consistency as my main aim, because this has two huge benefits. The biggest improvement to my performance will be consistently hitting my training sessions, and not missing them due to illness or injury. And it allows fun to stay as an integral part of my training. Now, most athletes I speak to have some sort of training plan, whether that's from a coach, an app, a random plan that they've downloaded from online, or one that they've just created themselves. Within the plan, it's important to have a distribution of training intensities, and there's usually something like threshold or tempo in there. The term threshold refers to your second lactate threshold and the zone where you're working on your body's ability to clear lactate at the same rate as it's being produced, with the aim to improve your lactate tolerance and therefore your lactate threshold. Usually these come in the form of six to 12 minute intervals, although they might be longer, with a couple of rests between them and usually the intensity is hard but sustainable. But it's this which I got completely wrong, and I think others do too. If we look at what threshold training really means, it's an effort or intensity that you can maintain for roughly an hour, and this is because the average person can exercise at their second lactate threshold for roughly 60 minutes. The second lactate threshold, by the way, is the area on the chart here where afterwards your lactate starts to accumulate quicker than you can clear it, and you'll start to fatigue too quickly and have to slow down. And a quick side note, lactate isn't the bad guy and doesn't actually produce those painful muscles. That's probably due to an excess of hydrogen ions or protons. But lactate is something that you can measure that is indicative of how hard you're working. So the first core principle and question I need to ask myself when considering my threshold training is this. Can I genuinely hold this intensity for an hour? If I look back on my sessions and ask myself whether I could actually hold the pace or power for 60 minutes, the answer in the most part is honestly no. I could hold the pace or power for the intervals. Sure, they were hard but sustainable. But if I had kept that up, I'd have been hooked by 30 minutes. And this came into more stark contrast recently when I started measuring my lactate during my training sessions again. I had been training far less recently compared to last year when I had my most up-to-date training zones figured out based on lactate testing. Because I hadn't been training as much, I did scale back my expectations. I dutifully dropped my FTP and my expected threshold running pace even though it's stung to do that. But I started taking lactate measurements during my longer threshold intervals 
and found that my lactate was going above my second threshold region pretty quickly. The problem was that the intervals still felt manageable and I knew I could complete harder or longer intervals. So the temptation was there. Why would I want to reduce intensity or not go harder? This comes back to the aim of the session, working at my lactate threshold. If my aim was to work above it or force adaptations in a different training zone and towards VO2 max, then of course I should go for that. But if my genuine aim was to work at threshold, then going harder serves no purpose other than fatiguing myself and adding more stress to my body. In hindsight, I realized that some of my intervals were so far beyond my genuine capabilities. And to be honest, this goes back over the last couple of years. I'd get to the end of an interval, breathing hard, feeling a slight nausea and tingling beginning. But then I'd take a couple of minutes rest, it would settle and I'd crack on with my next one. But really, this meant I was pushing my body way harder than necessary, especially considering I'd still included some genuine VO2 max efforts in my training sessions as well. The end result of this was taxing my nervous system and overloading myself, which can contribute to regularly struggling with upper respiratory tract infections like the common cold. So despite what I thought, it was actually counterproductive. I should have been doing these intervals at a lower intensity so that I was working at the correct intensity. And this is something I'm way more careful with nowadays, with both the bike and the run. I won't go through this fully here, but if you're interested in how to use lactate to optimize your training through testing your own lactate threshold, then you can watch my video on YouTube. By the end of that one, you'll know how to do the test and there's a free guide in there for you too. But I hear you. You might be thinking, what if I don't have a lactate meter? Don't worry, you don't need to have one to manage your training sessions better. Lactate is not the be all and end all, although I do think for the right person, it can be super useful. But you can use the concepts I've talked about so far in this video, along with some key lessons that I've learned from my own testing, as well as from working with athletes. Most people overestimate things like a threshold pace or power. Unless you have a reliable 60 minute reading, and for most people they don't, go easier than you think you need to, especially if you're newer to training. As you gain more experience, you'll get better at understanding your zones, but I still think many experienced athletes overcook their threshold sessions. If you have any doubt that you can complete a 12 minute interval at your threshold pace, then you've got it wrong. Because think about what it really means. Threshold is something you can hold for an hour. But if you're getting towards the end of your interval thinking, I'm not sure I could have done more of that, then it's likely way too hard. 15 or even 20 minute intervals at your threshold should only be reasonably uncomfortable at best by the end of them, because you should still be capable of another three or four intervals. I don't always think that perceived exertion is helpful for knowing how hard you're working, but you can use signs and symptoms to help you gain insight into this. If you can feel a rising nausea or tingling by the end of the interval, it's too hard. These shouldn't be present after a threshold interval because it's indicating that it's not sustainable. Similarly, starting your intervals by focusing on good form and steady breathing. If you can't maintain these, then that's a good indication that your effort level and fatigue is rising outside of what you're capable of holding. So hopefully these tips will give you a good understanding of how to manage your threshold training sessions a bit better and keep you training consistently over time. If you are interested in learning how to measure your own lactate, then you can watch this video here for a full guide on how to do it.